it's fun to be a part of busy town. Oh, oh. keep your spirits soaring while we're exploring our busy world. The Busy World of Richard Scary. Slow down, Hako. Can't we take a rest? No, Louie. We can't stop until we find a birthday present for Mom. Heads up, Huck! My bell won't ring! Uh-oh. Watch out! <gasps> ah! Stop! Oh! Oh. Uh-oh. Is he all right? Yes. Oh, he's fine. Okay. Let's go find Mom's present. Hey, Lily. What about a diamond ring? Or, or a violin? How about that great train set? Hako, do you want a present for yourself or for your mother? Look at all those clocks! Come on! Hello? Mr. Tick-Tock? I'll be right with you. What big eyes you got, Mr. Tick-Tock? All the better to see you with, my boy. Now, what can I do for you? I'm looking for the perfect birthday present for my mother. A birthday present? Let me see. This clock is quite grand. It looks expensive. It's really nice, but I don't have very much to spend. Well, that's not a problem. Now, here's a pretty little clock that should fit your budget. <gasps> wow, it's great. I'll take it. I can hardly wait to give it to Mom. Come on, I think I know a shortcut. Not so fast! Huckle, your bell's broken! Look out! Break! Break! Oh, no. Yikes! Whoa! When I said break, I didn't mean everything in busy town. Okay, folks. Let me help you up. There you go, P.S. You were going too fast, Huckle. I know. I'm sorry. I was in a hurry to get home. Why didn't you ring your bike bell? I did, but it's broken. Don't you think it would be a good idea to get it fixed? That's not all that needs fixing. Oh, no! <gasps> present. It's broken. You'd better take that clock to Mr. Fix-It. And your bike bell, too. Hello, Huckle. Hello, Loli. Hello, Mr. Fix-It. Hold on, boys. I'm just about to finish a delicate operation on these false teeth. There. That does it. I broke my bike bell, and this cuckoo clock, and my wheel is bent. Do you think you can fix them, please? Hmm. Ah, of course I can. There's nothing Mr. Fix-It can't fix. Just you wait and see. Thank you, Mr. Fix-It. I'll be finished in an hour. 
See, I told you Mr. Fix-It can fix anything. Now, let's see. Hmm. Let's see. A hammer. Saw. Ah! This wrench ought to do it. Now, I wonder where this piece goes. Ooh, better hurry up. <laughs> Bill, <laughs> wheel, clock. <laughs> Boy, does he sound busy. I wish we could see what he's doing. I'm not sure he knows what he's doing. Are you kidding? Mr. Fix-It is a genius. Uh-oh. Oh, well, there's nothing Mr. Fix-It can't fix is my motto. So here we go. Voila! And I even gift wrapped it. Wow! Oh, thank you, Mr. Fix-It. You're terrific. Glad to be of help. Fix-It's the name. Fixin's the game. <laughs> I can hardly wait to give Mom her present. Hi, Mom! Mom, happy birthday! Oh, thank you, Hako. What can this be? Whoa! <gasps> hey, that's my bike bell. It's a wonderful present. You mean you like it? Mm -hmm. I love it. Wow! Look at this! Mr. Fix-It really is a genius! And you boys gave me the best birthday present ever. Now everybody will hear us coming, Huckle. Imagine that! Huckle, did you put a stamp on your letter? Well, I... You have to if you want your letter delivered. But... Make sure you have the right address And don't forget the stamp Cause it's the letter's ticket to A place on any map Into the mailbox the letters go Where they will be picked up A postal worker bags the mail And throws it into the truck The letters are stamped with the city's postmark A stamp. Sure, everyone knows that. Our story begins in Ireland, a place of rolling hills, four leaf clovers, and magical rainbows. <laughs> now, the Irish are famous for two things singing. Sure, it's Ireland, it's Ireland, it's Ireland we love. Sure, it's Ireland, it's Ireland, it's Ireland we love. Yeah. And when the Irish aren't singing, they're talking. Do go on, we're can't going do for anything it. about it. We can't you just help ourselves. Stop doing. Did you say something? Don't I always? But our story is about a little Irish fellow who never sang or talked. All Patrick O'Swine could say was, Oink. Look at me, child. I'm a talker, me father's a talker, and me father's father before him. Why can't he talk, Tessie? A handsome boy with eyes as green as a shamrock, and all he can say is... Oink. Oink. This looks like a fine place to dine. What do you think, Tessie? Fine, then. Here we'll eat. Oink. Three rules of the house. 
No yelling, no fighting, and you talk to them at your own risk. Oh, Top of the morning to you. Hello. How are you today? <laughs> What do you say to barley soup, Tessie? <gasps> then barley soup it is. Pardon me, but you're sitting at our table. Of course we are. You wouldn't expect us to sit at a stranger's table, would you? Do I know you? Well, you waved at us, didn't you? Yes, but I... Well, you wouldn't wave at someone you didn't know, would you? Not on principle, but I... Do you deny waving at us? No, I... Do you deny not inviting us over? No, I... What was the question? Pat him on the back. What a sport. Give him a hug. Since you've been hospitable, the least we can do is help. Help? Help what? Help your son to talk. What do you say, wee fella? You want to learn to talk? Oink. Well, well then, we're, we're off to Blarney Castle. Castle. What's at Blarney Castle? Why, the legendary Blarney Stone, of course. What a sport. Shake his hand. Pat him on the back. We'll take a ride to Blarney Castle over the hills past Corn. There, he'll kiss the Blarney Stone. Just one kiss of that magic stone, and he'll be able to talk and gab and cheat. <laughs> Jack, do you think it'll work? Absolutely. Definitely. Positively. What do you say, Tessie? Shall we take a little jaunt down to Blarney Castle? <gasps> then it's settled. Off we go. He'll kiss that stone and learn to talk, by golly. He'll be a talker, just like all the other old swines before him. Oink. What's the hold up? Ah, a leprechaun crossing. Here we are, Blarney Castle. Have you ever seen such a place, Tessie? <gasps> neither have I. According to legend, there was a king who could neither talk nor sing. But his subjects desperately wanted to know what he had to say. Try as he would, he couldn't utter a sound. Until one day, the king saved a witch from drowning. To thank him, she cast a spell and presented him with a magic blarney stone. As he staggered under its weight, his lips touched the stone and... To everyone's amazement, he began to talk. Help! Get this rock off me! The stone at Blarney Castle has been a legend ever since. Are you ready to talk then, son? Boink. Boink. Couldn't he just blow it a kiss? No, his lips must touch the stone. Allow us to demonstrate. Hold on to his pants. You better tighten your belt, son. Oink. Well, he's not talking. It always worked before. Never failed. Erango Bra. Well spoken, boy. Mother McCree, Patrick O'Swine, Casey O'Reilly. That's my boy. O'Brien, O'Bannon, O'Doul, O'Neill, O'Toole. Fine, son. You don't want to tire yourself out. O'Brien, O'Hare, O'Hara, O'Malley, O'Me, O'My, O'You. Ireland forever. Erringo Cork County, Dublin, Ulster, Galway, O'Keefe, O'Connor, O'Banion. Will the child Aaron never stop talking? O'Keefe, Eventually, O'Brien, possibly. Probably not. Limerick, O'Keefe, O'Connor, O'Banion, O'Rourke. Oh, no. Mother McCree. Patrick O'Swain, Casey O'Reilly. Do you know of anything that we can do to make him stop, Tessie? <gasps> neither do I, neither do I. So what do we do now? Oink. Hey, 
it safe. Lonely, come on! I have to get groceries at the market before it closes! Stop! Stop, look, and listen. Never run onto the street, not even to chase a ball. Never cross between park cars, cause drivers won't see you at all. Store is closed. Better late than never. They're always in my way. Stop! Stop! Here comes Mr. Gronkle. Good morning, Mr. Gronkle. <laughs> I don't see anything good about it. Oops. Oh, what's this doing in my way? People, people everywhere. Oh, the world would be a better place without them. My hand. Oh. Get some peace and quiet. <clears throat> yoo -hoo, Mr. Gronkle? It's me, Hilda Hippo. One of those annoying little kids? Huh? Okay, so you're an annoying big kid. Mr. Gronkle, I'm trying to raise... Go away! Oh, dear. <laughs> I don't mean to annoy you. I'm just trying to raise money for the hospital by selling these nut crunchies. I don't give to charities. And I wouldn't eat nut crunchies if I was stranded at the North Pole. But it's for kids. Have a kind heart and take these last boxes off my hands. <gasps> well, I'd be happy to help you get rid of them. Really? Get out of here! Yes, sir! <laughs> kids, what are they good for? Except trouble. <sighs> Wouldn't it be nice to go ice skating on Mr. Gronkle's pond? Yeah! Let's go! Forget it! Mr. Gronkle won't let anyone near his pond. Last summer, Flossie and I went for a swim, and he chased us off with a stick. But look! The gate's open! Maybe he's had a change of heart. Huh? huh? Come on, let's go skating. Maybe we should just ask him if it's okay to skate on his pond. Come on, the gate is open. Aw, oh, Sally, you want me to teach you how to skate, don't you? Okay. Wait a minute. The ice is too thin here. Let's use the other pond. Now. Do exactly as I do. Whoa! Like this? Whoa! Ho! Ho! You don't have to do that part. Oh, okay. Hey, I'm doing it! I'm skating! Oh, Huckle, you must be the best skater in Busy Town. Well, not really. Maybe second best. This is so much fun. I sure hope Mr. Grunkle doesn't catch us. Charity. Nut crunchies, indeed. First thing you know, those kids will be back selling magazine subscriptions. And then before you know it, I'll have kids skating on my pond. Uh. 
kids skating on my pond. Ow! Uh, I'll show them. Confounded kids. Hey, you kids! What are you? Uh, uh, ouch! Uh, Ow! Mr. Gronk goes tobogganing. I'm not so sure. He's waving a stick. Whoa! I'll teach you to skate on my pond. Whoops! Watch out, Mr. Grunkle! Thin ice! <gasps> help! Help! Quick! He'll freeze! Huckle, no! You'll fall in! I know! Let's get the ladder! Come on! No! Don't leave me here! I'm coming, Mr. Gronkle. Careful. Push it toward Mr. Gronkle, but don't come out on the ice. Don't move, Mr. Gronkle. What are you doing, you miserable kids? You, you kids saved me. Oh. Open up, Mr. Gronkle. Hmm, temperature's normal. The perfect patient. I guess I messed up your skating party. But, Mr. Grunkle, you're more important than any old skating party. Why, thank you, Uncle. No one ever said that to me before. Now, won't you have a nut crunchy? Why, thank you. Mmm. Now I know what kids are good for. Kids are for curing grumpy, grouchy old hearts like mine. <laughs> I'm going to throw a party for all the kids in Busy Town. <laughs> Mr. Grunkle sure had a change of heart, Lily. Funny, isn't it? It just took a dip in ice cold water to warm the old guy up.